Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in the mood for some graphic novels and I have six on my TBR and I thought why not binge a bunch of graphic novels and tell you all my thoughts in a reading vlog. So this is going to be a graphic novel reading vlog and in this vlog I hope to read all six of these but we shall see. The first one that I'm hoping to read is Book Love by Debbie Tung I believe and this is a series of comics done in black and white. I read her Quiet Girl in a Noisy World collection and I really liked that one. I read that from the library so I don't actually have a copy of it but I would like a copy of it because it was super relatable but I'm hoping I love this one as well. Next up is Ghosts by Raina Talgemeyer. This is one that has been on my TBR for a little bit and I'm a little sad that it's taken me until now to read it but this is a middle grade graphic novel about some sisters that move to a new town and their town is supposed to be haunted. Next up I have a graphic novel I got for Christmas and that is The Seance Tea Party and I'm not sure how to say the author's name but this is about a girl that's really lonely and then she meets another girl ghost but then the ghost does not age and the girl does obviously so it's about that and I'm so excited about it. Next up, I have um, one that was sent to me for my birthday. Thank you so much, Richie. You're the best. And that is Anne of Green Gables, the graphic novel. Um, and I'm just, I love the story, you know, Anne of Green Gables. Um, and I'm just really excited to have this graphic novel. The artwork is very, very interesting. So hoping to get to that one. And then I have two graphic novels that I recently purchased myself. Um, I asked on Instagram for like some suggestions on which graphic novels you recommend. And I got this one recommended to me, The Girl from the Sea by Bonnie Knox Ostertag. And I'm really looking forward to that one. So thank you for the recommendation and then when I was out shopping for the recommendations I came across this one and it's Fake Blood by Whitney Gardner and both of these I think all of these except for Book Love are middle grade but this is about a boy that's really into a girl and she seems to be really into vampires so when they get paired up for a group project yeah he finds out that she's a vampire slayer so very very interesting this is the thickest one of the bunch but i'm really looking forward to it again the artwork is great so these are the six graphic novels that i'm hoping to get to and it should be a fairly quick vlog because i will show you close-ups of some of the artwork and i will tell you my basic thoughts but as always, this will be spoiler free in case you're interested in picking up any of these wonderful graphic novels. Book Love by Debbie Tung and I'm rating this little comic three out of five stars. I really did enjoy it. Um, it was super relatable. There were a lot of things in here that if you're a book lover, if you're a reader, if you're watching this channel, you're going to be nodding along, giggling along because it's just so freaking relatable. Um, and I really love the art style and um, it's just basically like little vignettes, little comics, like every little page or every little two pages is like a little mini comic. Um, things that could have made it better. Um, it didn't really bring anything like new, like all of this stuff is all over the internet. Um, it didn't really like, it wasn't 
fresh it wasn't new um love like i said the illustration style but it was all done in black and white which is definitely a choice i think if you go to publish something like if it's in a newspaper okay i can see it being you know black and white obviously but i think that even if not the whole thing was done in color if like maybe some of the full page illustrations like this one would have been in color um there was one where she did all of these book covers I think that would have been really pretty like this would have been really pretty in color um and like i said the whole thing didn't have to be in color but if it had these little pops of color throughout i think that would have been really pretty also if it would have just told like every the other book that i read by her and this one they're all just like these little comics rather than like a story from start to finish and i would love to see her art and her storytelling and a story from start to finish um rather than just like this comic style but i think that's her thing so i'm not gonna knock it i enjoyed it for what it is three stars moving on to the next one down I read Ghosts by Raina Talgemeier and I'm rating it four out of five stars. If you don't know Raina Talgemeier is probably like my favorite graphic artist, gra graphic novel artist, writer, author type person. Um, I just love her illustrations. I love her stories. They're a middle grade. Um, and I'm a little sad that I finally read this. I'm happy that I read it because like obviously she's my favorite but I'm sad because she's my favorite and this is the last published work that I had to read by her. I've read everything. I've read Smile and or, is it Smile Sisters Guts um, drama. This one. What else do I have? Um, and the Babysitter's Clubs. I've read the first four of those. Um, she's like redoing the Babysitter's Club, um, novels or books, whatever, you know, the middle grade series. Um, and then this one, and I'm just, I'm sad it's over, at least for now. I do still have some babysitter's clubs that I can pick up, but I don't know if she does all of them. But I'm excited to find out, and I'm excited for anything new that she has coming out. Um, this one was really cool because it was about a family moving from sunny Southern California to Northern California for the youngest girl right here, Maya. She has cystic fibrosis and uh, the weather in Northern California is supposed to be a little bit better for her. Oh so yeah, so the weather is a little bit cooler. It's a little bit foggier. Um, when they get there, the kids go out to kind of explore the new town, Kat and Maya, and they run across this like arcade looking thing on a boardwalk. They go exploring. They bump into this guy and he tells them that there's ghosts in their town and Kat is really freaked out about it and Maya's like, cool, I want to meet a ghost. And then, long story short, they celebrate um, Dio de los Muertes um, in their new town. It's like a really big festival. Um, they really, like, they go all out. And um, so Days of the Dead. And yeah, I really just liked the representation in here, not only of like Days of the Dead and Mexican culture, but also just like the cystic fibrosis of like a young girl. Um, and also in the back she talks about like the town that she it's the town that um she wrote about is like reminiscent of the town that she grew up in and then she talks about like the dios de los muertes and then she also talks about um cystic fibrosis over here and um she shows some sketches and of course um like the thank you at the end <clears throat> but one thing that i really did like um my favorite part of the book was probably the um day of the dead things um but yeah i really really liked it and the artwork like i said is really really lovely so four to five stars for this one and now on to the next one I'm here 
with another graphic novel read and unfortunately I think this is my least favorite one that I have read so far. It's teetering at like a two to three stars. I did go ahead and rate it on Goodreads and the story graph as like a generous three stars but I may or may not at some point after I've had time to think about it change that rating. Um, this just wasn't the story for me. I don't read fantasy and this was a lot of fantasy. Also, I loved the artwork. I, I like, come on. How freaking cute is that? But there were times, many times, where it was just kind of too much to look at. Like, for example, this with all of this stuff on the edges it's too much and there were just time like this is a lot this is a lot um there were times like this is what you know i'm kind of used to and i know that you know every artist has their own like thing um but there were just too many times that it felt like too much to look at like this and the edging that I showed you. Um, and then also there were these things in the book that I don't know what they were. I don't, my ultimate decision is that they're like these sprites, like spirits, but our main, okay, so let me tell you what this is about. It's about two girls. It's about Laura, who was a human girl. She's around like 12 years old or something like that. And um, she loves Halloween, she loves all things spooky, and her best friend, Alexa, is a ghost. And they, so Alexa haunts Laura's house, and they're, you know, best friends forever, except for, you know, obviously Laura grows up, and Alexa does not. And so it's all about, like, Laura is kind of scared to grow up. She doesn't want to change. She's worried about, I don't want to lose this part of myself type thing. And I really like the overall message and story of like friendship and, you know, being on that cusp of being a child and growing up and, you know, changing and, you know, grief and, you know, all of those things. Like I liked that, but there were just parts of the story that I just didn't get. So it opens up with this part right here and then it goes into, she's on her way to school, but she's like imagining something. So, okay, I got that. And then, okay, so she's arrived at school. She's meeting up with her friend. Um, they're going to school. But then all of this, I just kind of didn't get that this, this like passage of time like august september october um i don't know why we passed it and then there was a lot of like texting and stuff like that was a really big thing but look they love like a little spooky cake and her alarm clock is also spooky but look okay all of these little creatures around here they show up like several times throughout the story and I don't know what they are. See, look on this page down here at the bottom. Um, there were other pages. Oh, here they are. That's, you know, right here. They're like here and here and here. It's like, so I don't know what they are. Like too much of it was just fantasy for me and there were also so it was kind of telling us the passage of time in the beginning but then like towards the end I didn't really know what was going on um I don't know I just like I said I really liked the artwork I just think it was too much they were like look how awesome I am I'm gonna put my artwork all the way to the page on every single page I mean Obviously they didn't in every single page because there's pages like this. Too much to look at. Like all of these little, what are these? I don't get it. And then at the end, like these two, which are like, I guess stuffed animals, but I don't understand what the other things were. And they come into a thing towards the end. I don't want to show you that part, but I don't know. I just think it was the fantasy elements of this that I didn't like. 
but I liked the storyline. It's just that there were other little parts that were kind of fantastical that I couldn't like make okay in my head. So I think it's a me thing rather than like a book thing um, because this has a really high rating on Goodreads. A lot of people are rating it five stars. Other people are rating it four stars and there are very few like three stars or below. I didn't see any below three star reviews. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately, it's like, it's so beautiful to look at. And I'll definitely recommend it to people if they're wanting like a coming of age, friendship, autumn, you know, graphic novel, because it was good. I just didn't, I thought I was, I thought this was going to be five stars for me, you guys. And it just wasn't. So yeah, but it is very pretty. And I like that they included like all the little extras at the end um, about her initial sketches of the characters when she was pitching the story and um, the characters and even the cover and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. And then um, she shows like kind of her process. So I know that this artist works super, super freaking hard. Um, and I feel bad rating it as low as I did knowing how much work goes into this, but it just wasn't for me. It wasn't a five stars for me, but I can definitely recommend it to you guys if you like fantasy. Yes. All right. On to the next. my back deck because I just finished Anna Fring Gables adapted by Mariah Mar Marsden and the art is by Brenna Thumler and I absolutely loved this story so much. I mean Anne of Green Gables is one of my all-time favorite classics so I knew I was gonna like this. I just didn't know like how the adaptation was gonna be and it's great. I'm rating this one four out of five stars. I took off a star because I feel like it does go into, I mean, I could be wrong, but obviously it's not an entire story. It's not start to finish. I mean, look at the size of it. It's just not, you know? Um, I feel like there were some time jumps. I feel like there was some artistic license taken and that's to be expected in an adaptation, especially for a graphic novel, um, just like with like the show. <laughs> um, but I feel like there were some definite time jumps and there were some like missing pieces. It had like the vibe, it had the heart and soul of Anne of Green Gables, but I also feel like there was like one part that was cut short that I feel like we needed a little bit more of um, that has to deal with Matthew. You know, if you've, if you've read the book, you know, like towards the end. Um, and it's interesting because when I read Anne of Green Gables, I didn't realize that, well, I did realize at the, towards the end of the book, but at the beginning of the book, I didn't realize that Matthew and Marilla were brother and sister until the end of the book. And then I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Um, but in this one, they let you know it right away, which was interesting. Um, it has all of the funny hijinks of Anne and stuff like that um, about <laughs> just if you've read the novel, like, you know, when uh, she invites Diana over and they're acting like ladies and she's giving her some of the raspberry cordial, that whole thing um, that was in here. Um, just her making a cake for the preacher and his wife. Um, the whole brooch incident was in here, um, when Gilbert pulls her braids in class and says, um, carrot, calls her carrots, um, that's in here, um, yeah, I really did like it, I just think the part at 
with Matthew at the end was cut short. And I also think that it went a little, like the storyline went a little bit past like just the original Anne of Green Gables. Um, I feel like it did give it like a passage of time, but what I would have rather seen was like just Anne of Green Gables and then like for her to adapt the further graphic, like the other books into graphic novel form. I've only read Anne of Green Gables and like the original and this one. And I am looking for a complete eight book set that's pretty. I want a pretty edition, a pretty boxed set, a pretty like set of eight books that all match that are beautiful as well because I've only read the first book um, and I want to read the other ones at some point. The artwork in here was so, like I just loved it. It was so cute. Um, the only thing that it kind of bothered me but then like towards the end I kind of liked it was how she did the noses. Let me show you. And that picture right there. So the noses was kind of interesting and the eyes were like circles for the most part. Um, let me see if I can find a good picture of that. Yeah, like look at all these pictures of Anne at the bottom. So very, very interesting, but man, let me show you the one, the quote that we all know and love. Um, let me see if I can find the, it's a double page full spread. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. I thought it would have been coming up. Ooh. Oh, here we are. I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, how beautiful. to the girl from the sea by molly knox ostertag and this is so freaking cute you guys not only do i love the artwork and the color and like it seems like she's like a plus size character i love that um i love the story it kind of made me feel like if you've watched luca the pixar animated like Disney film or whatever. I would say if you liked Luca, you'll probably like this. And if you liked this, you'll probably like Luca. Environmentally, you know, friendly, if you will. And it's also LGBT because they get together. Um, but it's also just about like friendships and girl friendships in like particular. Also about uh, coming out and when is the right time how should you do that all of that um and it's about family and all of the things that can happen within a family as well um I adored it so much and I did not read Witch Boy or The Hidden Witch or I've really never read anything else by this author um, but I'm definitely going to check it out because I really enjoyed this one. I will say that I'm rating it four stars instead of five stars because there was a tiny little storyline, um, something about her father, and I don't feel like I got enough closure on that. Um, basically, apparently, the mom and the dad are divorced now, but you don't really know why necessarily or it's like they brought it up but then they didn't like give you any more information about that so yeah they brought up the dad's divorce but they didn't really tell us anything about him and he wasn't really in the story except for like in flashback scenes but they alluded to her brother having like a hard year and even the mom was like it's a hard year for all of us but they never really went into why other than the divorce so because they brought that up I think think that should have we we should have gotten like a little bit more information about that and I wish that her friend group was it seems like her friend group is really like understanding and stuff like that but I wish we would have gotten just a tiny bit more closure um 
on that. So if there was the dad little timeline, like kind of, I don't know, buttoned up and the friend group buttoned up, it would have been a five out of five stars, like for sure. But because those things really weren't and I felt like there were a little bit of plot holes there, I'm giving this four out of five stars. But highly recommend it for a female, female romance. Um, this is a middle grade graphic novel, so that's amazing. Um, like I said, the artwork is super, super cute. Yes, they have like text messages in there and stuff. And um, I would say it almost reads like they're young adults. So there's that. But yeah, I really, really liked this one. I'm here with my final update. I finished Fake Blood by Whitney Gardner, and I believe this is her debut. It's a coming of age story about, I don't know, some sixth graders, like a friend group of three people, um, one girl and like two boys. And one of the boys feels like he's not special. He's not like growing he just kind of feels left behind his friends are always doing really fun crazy things he feels like his life is boring um but he really likes this girl and she's really into vampires so he like hey maybe i'll make myself look like a vampire and she'll start liking me <laughs> it's kind of funny um but yeah so the other two they're always like betting each other like I'm gonna be taller than you. I can eat more cookies than you. And because it's always between them, he always feels left out. So AJ always feels left out. I have AJ, Hunter, and Ivy. They're like three best friends. They're going into sixth grade. They're talking about what they did over the summer. Um, and it seems like, you know, Ivy and Hunter did really fun things, but AJ didn't. He just kind of stayed home and read books and got a really cool, cool pair of sunglasses from the library and you know things like that so he feels kind of like left out um too young too small too average um and he's trying to impress this girl in his class they get paired up for a project he knows that uh she likes vampires they're actually doing their project on transylvania and the story just kind of takes off from there i would say overall i really liked like him trying to impress a girl and him faking to be a vampire and the other friends like always squabbling over these bets and stuff like that and i thought it was really relatable that aj kind of felt left behind in a sense um, and also just not really sure how to like tell Nia that he likes her you know even though he was trying to get advice from his big sister like it just didn't seem to work out also their mom is in this AJ and his sister BB um, their mom and it seems like it's a singer mother single mother household which I thought was very interesting um, and then but there was a part at the end so along with the like vampire like theme and stuff there's like this other part of the story that kind of takes place and obviously it's a middle grade graphic novel so it's very obvious what's going on to the reader um it's just you're waiting for the characters to kind of figure everything out and i just thought that it was so cheesy it was so cheesy and that was kind of like the last little bit um it was probably about let's see probably like this bit was really really cheesy and that's like a big chunk so for that reason i'm rating fake blood three out of five stars but i still really did overall enjoy it and i still and i will be picking up other things by this graphic artist but with that being said that completes my graphic novel binge i was able to read six graphic novels and share all of my thoughts with you which was amazing and i would love to do more graphic novel binges i just need some recommendations please so leave me your graphic novel recommendations in the comment section down below let me know if you have read any of these and what you thought i hope you're having a lovely day or night and i'll see you guys again in another video very soon bye guys